Welcome to our broadcast. This is my piggy, just gave birth as you can see. Been only a couple of days, we put her in a cage and she got 16 uh, babies here. Good mama this one, you know. I've been pondering about feeding the feeder. Because we're talking about body ministry, that means um, even though we feed, myself need feeding too and the, the reciprocal action that happens between the body. We minister to each, each other because each part supplieth. That's why we're calling ourselves the body ministry. It's all about body ministry, friends. We got a word to deliver. Stay tuned with him and me. We'll be right back. Oh, doggy. <laughs> Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to our broadcast. As you can see, my... Uh, my piggy getting all settled in, making ready to feed. You know, friends, I've been pondering a whole bunch of stuff. It's amazing what you can learn on the farm. Our God, he graphic and he can paint life story kind picture just by us working the aina, pondering and meditating upon him. He says that he that meditated upon him day and night shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in due season. And we're all about staying plugged in, friends, into the, the main line so that we can produce and reproduce fruit and produce seed in the earth. You know, seed produces of his own kind. You know, friends, I've been thinking about Saul. You know, Saul, he, the bugger went jam up how many times and three strikes you out. God raised up a prophet to come and speak regarding David. David would be the replacement king of Israel. And so that word was held by David. And you know, when you got a word, I said it before, that the enemy will come and try to distract on so many levels to try to deter you from hanging on to a word from God. In fact, the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's vitally important, friends, that you and I set our affections on things above and not on things of this earth where moth and rust, rust doth corrupt thieves come in and steal and the biggest thief on the block friends is satan himself that bugger he only come for steal kill and to destroy but our god comes that we might have life and have it in abundance and it's that abundant life friends that you and i gotta maintain you know i've learned something in watching these uh uh pigs how we have to move them from general population when it's almost time for hanau you know they say three weeks uh three months three weeks three days from the time insemination happens to the time she hung out, drop the babies, yeah? So I pay close attention. I leave them in general population until I see kind of like maybe a week or two. 
I see the body starts to change, they bulge out more, the nipples start getting more saggy. And I know their due date is uh, right around the corner. So I'll bring them, I grab them, and I relocate them to their own pen where they can have their own privacy, you know, the privacy like that, and have their own, make their nests. Pigs, believe it or not, make nests when time for her now. And in observation, I have to be able to feed the mama so that she can not only give birth, but that so she can also feed. And you know when you feed and you know eat good like that, whatever is left in you will be drained out from you and it's gonna be taken away by, in this case, the little pigs that is uh, sucking them up, you know. So it's important that me, the tender, the steward, take care and maintain one healthy diet for a mama so that she can continue to produce milk, maintain her strength so that she can continue to feed. I go back to this thing about a word from God. So David received the word from God. But you know, Saul in his rage and anger, knowing that he was to be replaced because of his disobedience to God, took matters into his own hands without consulting the Lord and being obedient to the word from God when it came to him. God had it in his heart to remove Saul and to replace him. So a prophet comes and prophesies to David that he would be the king that would replace Saul. You know, David having this word had many opportunities to advance God's word by having opportunity to take Saul out, to kill him prematurely so that David could make that word given him come to pass and David would become king. But in his own heart, he says, no, I'm not going to touch God's anointed. If, if that is the mind of God, then God going to have to take him out in order for the word that he gave to me to come into play. But I'm not going to touch God's anointed. You know, so... David had a real heart after God, but you, you understand that Saul, knowing that he was about to replace, uh, he, he went after David to take him out. I mean, he was out to kill him is, is what it was. So in the Psalms, I, I read a passage of scripture where David is crying out to the Lord in his own dilemma on the run. And he says this, this is found in um, um, Psalms 57, 2 to verse 5. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is amongst lions and I lie, even amongst them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. You know, friends, the, the beauty of being able to see a man of God. You know, all these things was written really for our learning upon whom all the ages, ages have culminated upon. We, we can learn a whole lot and God can revelate upon that the mysteries of his kingdom. As I said before, he teaches our hands to war and our fingers to fight. When you're standing at full attention, paying attention, he can show you the depths of stuff that most people in glossing over the scriptures go and miss. You know, so the beauty of meditation upon the word of the Lord day and night for me is a key. And I believe that impartation and the illustrations that I use on the farm, you know, in farm life stuff, I think is very beneficial. So we see David here on the run. This bugger is crying out and he said, Lord, I get lions all about me. And, you know, in reference to lions, uh, Paul in writing a letter to one of the churches, he says that Satan is as a roaring lion. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. And you know, friends, we're in the time right now where the very elect of God can be deceived if they're not held and prayed for, you know, because we're talking about body ministry. We're talking about each joint supplier. We're talking about God raising up people in our life to produce the feeding so can get us out of our dilemma or at least walk us through the dilemma as we learn to walk with God. God sends us people to accompany us, to, to nurture us, to raise us up full stature. You know, it is our job, friends, to feed the one that feeds. That is vitally important because if we're not uh, providing to each joint, you know, the scripture says that we all one body pot. And the body must function as one. Each joint must supply to each joint. So there needs to be a reciprocation going down. You see, if we're not doing that, then if you look at it from a uh, drawing standpoint, when we get body parts, if one body part got to do the function of two or three out of, out of body parts, 
it, it puts a taxing on the one that, that got to carry the whole load. You see, it's okay for the time being because we're trying to bring Christ forth out from each other, unlocking jail cells, uh, bringing healing, you know, again, going to Christ saying and equating himself to every uh, body part on the block, whether they're his or not. He, he equates himself by saying that I'm the one. When I was in prison, you never come visit me. When I was sick, hungry, thirsty, you never made provision for me. And the response was, Lord, when we saw you, let it. And Jesus turns around and he says, you never doomed to the least of them as if you never doomed to me. So notice, other sheep that I have that are not yet of this fold, them also I must bring. Then there's going to be one fold and one shepherd. He's talking about his body and his body extended. Those that may be incarcerated in, in their spirit, chained down by some sorts, it is our obligation as sons of God to reach out and to bring forth that Christ out from them, unshackle them, unwrap them, make the provisions for them. But when that peace wakes up and become cognizant to who's large and in charge, it is important that the, the one that feeds receive the feeding right back. Because by doing so, this is how we strengthen the body and the body maintains itself in the presence of the Lord. And now, talk about each joint supplies, now all of that comes into play. Go back to the topic of Satan as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. You know, friends, you and I are but human beings. We walk by faith. We live by faith. We move into him. I mean, we put all the kingdom principles together. But the importance of being one in spirit and in truth as a body of Christ is key in the hour that we're in right now. You see, again, all of these things was written for our learning upon whom all the ages have culminated upon. In other words, we're the final curtain. We're the unfolding. We're the kingdom of God coming forth. In this hour, it is likened unto his second coming happening right now. There will be a literal second coming of him coming forth in the clouds like how he left. That's what the scripture speaks to. But I do believe, friends, that if he said that he's not going to leave us comfortless, and that he would send the Holy Spirit to indwell us and be enthroned in us, then that means he's duplicated himself in all of us. That also means that we have an obligation to each, uh, to each body part in order to sustain spirit life in each other. Otherwise, if it's only drawing, 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 and, and not reciprocal, you can only take until it's gone and depleted. See, this is where Paul says that we got to pray one for another. You know, because of, of the warfare that would be culminating at this time. I am definitely not surprised with the witchcraft that's on the block and the deception that's on the block and the distraction. There is high level threats across this globe. I'm talking spiritually speaking, but you, you can also see that manifesting in the natural as well with having, uh, you know, wars and rumors of wars, nations coming against each other. Creation is responding to the hour that we're in right now, earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, false Christ arising from all, all these things, friends, we were forewarned about. So don't be surprised when you see these things coming about. In fact, we're told to look up because our re redemption draws nigh. In other words, God is drawing the curtain upon Satan once and for all. And the way he's doing that is through we, his many membered body of Christ. You see, you and I is the one that, that we take the kingdom and we hand them off. Because he's Lord of all and he's our Lord, then we got to see that the body of Christ has a significant part to play in this. No wonder there's so much mixture and so much attempts to have a form of godliness and deny the very essence. No wonder get plenty uh, letter, law being punched throughout this universe in the name of the Lord. Void of the Spirit, however. You and I cannot be part of that equation, friends. You see, this is where we're talking about spirit to spirit. We're talking about detaching from the lower planes and relating to Him in spirit and in truth, and then relating across the board to our brothers and sisters, whether they be free in their spirit or in chains. We got to prophesy their release by seeing them through God's eyes in spirit and in truth. That's why no we, no man after the flesh. Because if we drop to the lower planes of soul and physical, and that's the only relations and knowing that we know, then we're in trouble because Satan has access to those realms. And if we're caught in that web action, 
then we're not going to have his eyes. We're going to be caught in all of the turbulence. In fact, we'll become transfer points that the enemy can use by using other channels to transfer to us. And we who once spoke truth because we were in spirit and in truth, when we drop down to the lower levels, the enemy grabs us and now we become a mixed bag. Though we're speaking truth, it's all frayed and tainted with all satanic mixture. Friends, it's going to take a praying brother, a praying sister, one who knows the hour that we're in, in order to salvage, salvage us when we're in a place of deception. You know, again, Satan comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but the Lord says that he came, that we might have life and that we might have it uh, in abundance. I was looking at that um, story that speaks to the children of Israel. They were en route. They were heading to their promise, the land that God had promised them. And there were three tribes that decided that, ah, eh, this land over here is good for cattle. Uh, I, I think we like stay over here. I think it was Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. They were all in route. They were about to enter under the leadership of Joshua, uh, under the leadership of Moses, sorry. They were about to enter in and the people came to the man of God and says, hey, we satisfied with possessing this land on this side of Jordan. I, I know God promised Canaan, that's our land, and all the tribes are going to occupy, and chase all the enemy out, kill whoever we got, to, and then we're going to occupy the land. But you know, this land over here on this side of the Jordan is good for cattle, and, and we get cattle. So can we stay over here and, and, and not necessarily go into the, that promise that God required because we like this place? So the man of God comes and he says, if you do that, and you don't go to war with your brothers to take the promise so that they can get their inheritance and you satisfied with what you got right now as an inheritance, you're going to piss God off. In fact, it's going to be likened to the time that the 12 spies went out, 10 came back with bad report, and yet there was only two, me being Joshua and Caleb. We already, the two had good report because we had God's spirit upon us and we saw through his eyes, unlike the 10. And because the 10 when weak in the nation, God made us wander in the wilderness for 40 more years. You like be responsible for settling for this area and not taking the promise and not helping your brothers guys get their inheritance? Then I like you feel the weight of this. See, this is what the man of God was trying to tell him. And then the response of these three tribes, in their response to the man of God, they said, no, 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 we're going to build our cities, we're going to get our cattle all situated, we're going to leave our wives and children because of the hostility in the land, we're going to make sure everything's secure, and then we're going to take up arms and we're going to go help our brothers get what God told them that they would get. But we, we settle for this, we're happy with this. Then the man of God turns around and he says, okay, then if you're happy with where you're at right now, and you, you know, like go after the promise that God said that he would give all of us, but you, wanted to say, you want to settle here? Then by all means, I give you that as an inher inheritance. Only if you pick up arms and you go and you help your brothers possess their inheritance. And once they get theirs, then you're free to come back to yours. And we're at peace before God and men. But if not, you're responsible for God making us wander again in wilderness. You know, friends, the word of the Lord to this hour is that we ha time has culminated and now is the finest time. Now is the, uh, the Kairos hour, the appointed time for all the prophecies that God ever spoke to the prophets of old to culminate upon this hour. It is important, friends, I covet your prayers because it's important that you grab hold of, of the heart of God within me and not only draw. See, it's okay to draw and to feed upon that word that comes forth over this telecast. But you, I also covet the need for you to pray for me. My challenge before the Lord is that I have to be able to not only prophesy a word, but begin to see it already as a done deal. However, on the flip side, the enemy always comes and starts to throw doubt and all of that fear stuff. And I know what the word says, friends. It says that the fearful and the unbelieving go and lead the pack into hell. You know, and woe be it unto me that I speak a living word. And when I'm tried by the living word that I go blind and I get caught off guard. And if I ever do, I trust that the revelation of God that is in you as a son of God, that you're going to get my back. Because, you, you know what I mean? Because we're not on island alone. We're a body, and it's about body ministry. We got to feed each other, and we got to feed off each other while we're plugged into him. But you see, if it's him to him, and he's coming forth through you and I, 
Now we're talking about what God has promised as an inheritance. We're entering into our promise. See, we're not no longer waiting. However, faith and fear can cause this to flatline and throw everyone into another wilderness season. See, I, I, I don't want to say that that could not happen. It is a potential that it could happen. I mean, we see them in the scripture. All these things was written for our learning. What, you, what make us any difference? You see, they had to believe God while they were en route to the promise. They had to work out their soul salvation with fear and trembling. They were challenged by the lack of having. They preferred the bondage because at least had provisions in that time. But now they were en route to better times and into a promise. And that hardship in between the bondage and the freedom, they carried a word. They were challenged by the word. Friends, I'm no different than you. You see, the very words that I speak, I too will be challenged by that very same word. From the time the word came to the time it came to pass, the word of the Lord tried Joseph. And Joseph was a mere man, but he was a man that carried a word from God. I'm a man that's carrying a word from God. And that word, which also means, is going to try me. But while we're undergoing that trying, as Jesus says to Peter, 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 Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. I, Jesus, have prayed the Father that your faith no fail. And when thou art converted, you will be strength to the brethren. My friends, it's vitally important that you and I see us as Christ in the mix, praying strength, that the faith of our brothers no fail. Because the intents for the exercise the, or, or the provision to exercise, the ability to exercise the word by being thrust into a situation allows us to build spirit muscles. Whether you pass or fail, don't get distracted by what comes your way. God affords us the opportunity to flex our muscles to get our own self out of the mix. See, it is in your mouth that the word, your own deliverance is in your mouth. If we're in his mouth, that means we're speaking him into the earth. Just like Revelations, the Lord on our white horse and in his mouth you want two-edged sword. Friends, that's the living word. This is the, the importance of you and I suiting up and remain suiting up. And that we move in the earth like Joel's army. Not breaking ranks and not thrusting one another true. Which brings up this final point in Ephesians chapter 6. The, the beauty of this, friends speaks to a covering. I mean, first Paul writing the letter to the church of Ephesus in chapter six, verse one, you can read on. He speaks to the, he addresses children. He says, children, honor your mother and, and father, be obedient to them as unto the Lord. You know, that keeps us, talk about divine order stuff. If, if the Lord is the umbrella and the covering over all of us, within the home settings, you got the parents. We obey our parents in the Lord. And as a result, that covering that comes from the Lord through our parents, goes through to the children and the children remain in divine order. Then Paul skips on and he talks about slaves and masters. He says, you slaves, honor your masters, be subjected unto them as unto the Lord. Then he turned the table and he says, you masters, you be careful how you treat your slaves because you have one in heaven that is over you. So notice there's coverings after coverings. And then it comes down to the point right now in Ephesians chapter 12, where we're going to pick up our reading. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, your loins speaks about the girding up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. The enemy plays us in our minds when we start to think, and then we attach those thoughts to preconditioned responses from the old nature. We've been talking a whole lot about the old nature and how you and I have to come out from amongst that jurisdiction of the old nature take hold of God's provision in Christ Jesus, cross the border, enter into God's kingdom as a child, and go through the seasons with him, through the situations and fire, because he purges out all of those things that were Klingons to us. They were attachments to us from the old nature. They haunt us even while we're sons of God in his kingdom. So he brings it to light by putting us through the fire and situations to expose all of those things that's hanging on. 
so that when we smell our spirit's response to the situation, we can, with understanding, repent before the Lord. Friends, it's important that you guard your heart and guard your mind. Put arm guards around your heart, the scripture says, for out of it are the issues of life. But you see, when you're a mixture, death can also come out from that same heart. And the scripture goes on to read, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Notice that, friends, you and I are to pray one for another. And it's, we're told that above all of this armor, you put on, you take the shield of faith so you can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Friends, sometimes we need to run block for each other and, and use our faith and extend that out for our fellow brothers. I covet that of you because this is body ministry, friends. No man stands alone with this. You and I stand as individual before the living God, but we are obligated before God to body ministry each other and to full stature in Christ Jesus and to become each other's covering. Feed the feeder. To the next time, friends, may the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, and you be blessed. Aloha. Ahoy ho. Oh, dear.